the Japanese Navy never dreamed that the huge sun flag on the aircraft carrier deck not only did not bring the dawn of victory, but instead became a target for the US military. For main aircraft carriers were sunk in just one day, and this defeat was actually related to a US military pilot. On December 7, 1941, shortly after the USS Enterprise left port, a bomber flew overhead, and the ace pilot began to simulate an emergency landing on the ship due to aircraft failure. Not only did he not release the wings, but he also took the initiative to cut off the power and deliberately stalled the engine despite the objections of the gunner. The plane that lost power instantly tilted and, as expected, plunged into the sea. The crew of the Enterprise was very anxious, but the next second... Everyone thinks that Best is showing off his skills, but they don't know that this young man will become famous in a battle soon, and may even save the entire United States. Because at this time in Pearl Harbor, Japanese fighter jets were bombing the US fleet indiscriminately. Japan's undeclared war almost wiped out the Pacific fleet. The Enterprise immediately responded and took off all fighter jets to search for the Japanese fleet, but due to lack of with intelligence support, the formation flew in the wrong direction and found nothing so it had no choice but to return to the aircraft carrier unwillingly. When the Enterprise rushed back to Pearl Harbor, billowing smoke obscured the sky, and the miserable scene deeply shocked everyone. 1941, President Roosevelt delivered a speech to Congress, and the United States officially declared war on Japan, thus kicking off the Pacific War. Yamamoto 56 knew that just one sneak attack could not guarantee victory, and a combat plan must be formulated as soon as possible to annihilate all US aircraft carriers in one fell swoop. The Midway Island plan emerged from this. On the other side of the United States, Roosevelt appointed Admiral Nimitz to be the commander-in-chief of the Pacific Fleet and lead the remaining US Navy to fight against Japan. This was undoubtedly a huge challenge. Japan has 10 aircraft carriers, plus 9 battleships, and its destroyers and fighter jets are also more advanced, but the United States has only 4 aircraft carriers and not a single battleship. The tragic failure of Pearl Harbor made Nimitz realize the importance of intelligence, so on his first day in office, he met with intelligence officer Layton. And Layton's important performance in the future also lived up to Nimitz's trust in him. On February 1, 1942, the USS Enterprise approached the Japanese ward Marshall Islands, preparing to destroy military targets on the islands while the Japanese aircraft carriers were not nearby. The US military torpedoed the formation flying at low altitude, trying to sneak attack the Japanese battleship in the port. However, it was soon discovered that it encountered intensive firepower, and the formation suffered heavy losses. Only one torpedo was fired. The people on the ship were frightened, but they never expected that the torpedo hit the back of the ship but did not explode. At this time, Sturr discovered that the Japanese airport was queuing up to take off heavy bombers, so he immediately led the team to attack. Although he was intercepted by a Zero fighter, he still drove the Bolton Paul Defiant and accelerated towards the Japanese hangar. In order to increase the hit rate of the bomb, he took the risk of passing through intensive firepower and only dropped the bomb when he was 300 meters above the ground. And high risks also bring huge benefits. Most of the Japanese bombers were destroyed, and only five were left to launch a counterattack against the Enterprise. Because the bombers dropped their bombs too high, the captain had enough time to direct the Enterprise to avoid the bombs. But a bomber that was hit seemed unwilling to fail and wanted to die with the Enterprise. Everyone was stunned on the spot. Only the mechanic Riel stepped forward and successfully stopped a bombardment by using the rear seat machine gun of the fighter disaster. <laughs> On April 18, 1942, the Hornet carried 16 B-25 bombers and approached Japan under the protection of the fleet. Air Force Lieutenant Colonel Doolittle will lead the team to bomb Tokyo, Japan. However, the fleet was discovered by a Japanese patrol boat on the way, and the bomber formation had to take off in advance, which meant that there would not be enough fuel for them to be dropped into China. After several hours of flight, Tokyo's industrial area was quickly bombed. The Prime Minister was frightened into a cold sweat and hurriedly hid in the air raid shelter. The bomber formation that escaped unscathed barely reached the skies over Zhejiang, China. They abandoned the plane and parachuted into the Japanese-occupied territory. Fortunately, Chinese soldiers and civilians risked their lives to help, and most of the pilots were safe and sound. While the bombing of Tokyo boosted the morale of the US military, it also greatly stimulated the Japanese Navy. In the subsequent Battle of Coral Island, the US military lost the aircraft carrier USS Lexington, which undoubtedly worsened the situation for the US Navy. The Japanese Navy, which had an absolute advantage, had already decided to attack Midway Island in a sneak attack, 
luring the U.S. aircraft carriers out in full force, thereby achieving a combat plan of annihilation. But the Navy's top brass ignored intelligence work and gained Nimitz' unconditional trust. Leighton and his team made a major breakthrough when they intercepted 60% of Japan's encrypted communications and successfully deciphered 40% of them. In the message with a huge amount of information, Midway Island gradually came into the sight of the US military. As long as the time and direction of Japan's attack were clear, it would be able to achieve a surprise and complete victory. While Leighton was engaged in intelligence operations day and night, Nimitz personally went to the Pearl Harbor shipyard and ordered that the USS Yorktown be repaired at all costs before the battle began so as to increase the chips for the decisive battle at Midway. At the operational meeting a few days later, Leighton lived up to expectations and gave key information. The Japanese army would launch an attack from the northwest of Midway on the morning of June 4. According to Nimitz's deployment, the Yorktown merged with the fleet and began to prepare for war. A naval battle that determined life and death was about to begin. In the early morning of June 4, 1942, the US military took off fighter jets from Midway Island, quietly waiting for the appearance of the Japanese navy. Sure enough, at 6.40 in the morning, a large number of Japanese fighter jets suddenly appeared and launched a frantic bombing of Midway Island. The well-prepared US military quickly locked the position of the Japanese fleet, and the formation from Midway flew over the Japanese fleet at 7.10. All the aircraft lined up in a straight line and pounced on the aircraft carrier, but were immediately intercepted by anti-aircraft fire. Instead of dive bombing, they glide to drop bombs, most of the aircraft were quickly shot down, and the first wave of attacks ended in a disastrous failure. Immediately afterwards, the USB-17 bombers joined the battle. Due to the fierce Japanese anti-aircraft firepower, the bombers could only drop bombs from high altitudes, resulting in a bomb hit rate of almost zero. Although the attack failed to achieve its goal, Japan believed that Midway Island was still a threat, so it ordered carrier-based aircraft to launch a second round of bombing. It was this fatal decision that caused the Japanese fleet to lose its fighter planes and fall into dire straits. When the reconnaissance plane discovered the US aircraft carrier, the captain realized that the situation was not good, and quickly ordered to stop bombing Midway Island, and immediately replaced the torpedoes and armor-piercing bombs for the carrier-based aircraft. But it took a lot of time. At this time, the US carrier-based aircraft had been upgraded one after another. From the air, the torpedo plane formation that arrived first forced its way through the fire network at low altitude to attack the aircraft carrier. Unexpectedly, the Japanese ship's intensive air defense firepower, coupled with the harassment of Zero fighters, caused the entire squadron to be wiped out in the blink of an eye. Just as the captain was secretly rejoicing, Best's bomber squadron arrived. Under his strict requirements, the pilot's skills were very good. The entire squadron adopted a dive strategy, which not only effectively reduced offensive casualties, but also greatly improved bombing. With a high hit rate, several bombs penetrated the front deck of the cargo aircraft carrier, and the entire aircraft carrier was instantly engulfed in fire. Before the Japanese carrier-based aircraft could take off, the Sarayu aircraft carrier also suffered a fatal blow. The sudden change in the battle situation shocked the captain, and the three aircraft including Best had already accelerated and dived towards the Akaji. Even though the aircraft carrier was fully equipped with firepower, they could not stop their approach. Unfortunately, the two comrades failed to withstand the pressure and dropped bombs in advance at an altitude of hundreds of meters. The two bombs fell on both sides of the Akaji and did not cause effective damage. But Best did not back down and continued to increase his power to approach the aircraft carrier. Looking at the smoke-filled aircraft carrier, the Japanese pilot was extremely desperate. He ran out of fuel and could only fall into the sea. Yamamoto, who was far away on the Yamato, learned that three aircraft carriers had been sunk, but none of the US aircraft carriers had been damaged. He was so angry that his blood pressure soared. He then ordered the remaining Flying Dragon to launch a counterattack and finally seriously injured the USS Yorktown. After learning the news, Best immediately returned to the Enterprise to replenish ammunition, and gathered the remaining pilots to form a mixed bomber squadron, which quickly pounced on the Hiryu. Determined to die, the pilot struggled to break through the interception of the Zero fighter. The few remaining bombers also face intensive anti-aircraft firepower from the aircraft carrier. In the extremely cruel dive operation, all Best's comrades were killed, and only he was lucky enough to survive. In the end, he used his extraordinary courage to sink Japan's last aircraft carrier and became the only legendary figure in history to sink two aircraft carriers on the same day. In the Battle of Midway, Japan suffered heavy losses. Four of its main aircraft carriers were buried in the Pacific, and a large number of outstanding pilots were lost. Japan's ambition to dominate the Pacific was completely shattered. 
Since then, the Japanese Navy has been retreating steadily. On September 2, 1945, the US fleet entered Tokyo Bay, Japan, and Japan officially signed the Instrument of Surrender, marking the complete end of World War II.